Yeah, it's just going on. Yes, yes. Very good, Carl. Now, I'm very pleased to, to discover or to hear that you've been making a film of Oscar Wilde. You are so like Oscar Wilde. Born to be wild. <laughs> um, it's, <laughs> it's rather terrifying, really, because uh, so many people have said that, because I do yeah. look a bit like him. Yes. And so well, he was large and... Fat, uh, be yeah, honest. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle. No, but yeah. because, because I look like him and, and, and some people say, oh, yes, it's absolutely yeah. right and natural, I have this awful feeling that... Uh, I can only disappoint people, you know, yeah. because if it is good and they like it, they'll say, well, yes, we always said, it. obviously yeah. it was good, and if it's terrible, they go, yeah. oh, I thought you were going to be rather good, and you weren't. You know. <laughs> but when you come to play a, a real person like that, do you have to play it with a bit of an Irish look? No, he said, he said, he said, uh, no, no fizzy drinks of any kind at all. He said that... Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was famous for that sort of joke about... <laughs> Old yeah. shoe-faced Oscar, he yeah. spoke through a, a thick brogue. But, um, no, he... Uh, uh, <laughs> He didn't. He said. He, said, he didn't. Yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. said that Irish was one. His Irish accent was one of the many things he forgot at Oxford. Yes. Um, and uh, there is a tape recording that some people think is based on the cylinder of Oscar speaking in the great Paris exhibition. But um, his grandson Merlin Holland says, and most people know about it, so it isn't him. And that's a very high voice indeed. It's yes. him reading a verse of Reading Jail. And it's, you know, each man kills the thing he loves. <laughs> yeah. really does yes. sound like that. And, I'm, and I, you're doing that in the I, film like that? I promise yeah. you I'm not. That sounds excellent. I promise you I'm not. <laughs> but do you have a genuine empathy with Oscar Wilde? Because there are parallels that can be drawn. Because there are not but like uh, but not you know, like he wrote plays and you've written... Well, he wrote you know, masterpieces. Yeah, well, you wrote Me and My Girl. Or <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly Lady Fandermere's Wind, is it? <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, <laughs> and uh, and when, when you're talking about your own sort of personal circumstances, you often, often say, well, you, you would rather like to have a sort of Victorian family or a wife and children, yet you remain celibate and all that sort of thing. He had that sort of, he had a family, a wife and family, yeah. and he was homosexual, which was, led yeah. to his court case and downfall and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you have any sort of... No plans to be arrested, um, no. <laughs> no. No. I hope. Um, yes. Oscar was an outsider, yes. um, and I always feel like an outsider. Yeah. I think, I mean, millions of people do. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I always feel, you know, uh, that there was some lesson I, I had um, a toothache or something that day was at the dentist while well, everybody else learnt about life or what yeah. it means to get on and be normal but and that's that I missed it. <laughs> but that's a strange thing for you to say because if, if most people listening will say, what do you mean you're an outsider? You're, you have BBC series, you were at uh, Cambridge, mm. you went to a public school, you're friends with the great and the good, I'm sure you have dinner, you know, go to fundraising dinners for political parties. How, in what sense are you an outsider? I think, I think, I mean, I, I, I think anyone, a sort of keen observer of human nature would see that as proof of my being an outsider. It's this kind of desperate, na yeah. wanting to be liked, wanting to belong, wanting to... Oh, of course, I am only half English anyway. Um, my, my mother's uh, Austro-Hungarian Jewish, um, and so... Uh, and, you know, one's in nature, <laughs> as Oscar likes to call yeah. it, uh, and, and various other things make one feel. See, I'm saying but one all the time. I can never say <laughs> I. It's so embarrassing, isn't it? Um, I end up talking talk like Prince Charles. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Another, you'll be saying he's an outsider next because his great great grandfather was a German or something. But, the, uh, but you, you were born and brought up in no, England. You're, right. you're I mean, an educated. Well, what that sort that of sense. outsider are you? I just mean, um, I'm sure lots of people feel it. I, I, I just feel, and I enjoy the feeling of being an observer. Mm. Um, rather than part of the game. Now, I, I know what you are doing at the moment, apart from having finished your film, you're, now, you're going around the country uh, book signing your, your yeah. book, your own book, yeah. which I suppose we're going to have to take out and look at. Oh, but a very it. attractive picture of you at the back, oh, and a uh, sort of design thing on the front, uh, mm -hmm. making history. Now, that's another odd thing, we we'll talk about that just a second, but the odd thing I've seen you say is that you actually like doing this book signing business. You well, you know, if you, when you write a book, it's, it's sort of you know, months of, of, of being alone, yeah. and when people read a book, they generally yeah. read it alone, sometimes two in a bed, you know, yeah. one reads, the other turns over. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the, uh, but you um, say you're celibate, I guess. Uh, <laughs> the observer sees more of the game, that's yes. the point. And, um, <laughs> uh, so that was you last night, was it? <laughs> <laughs> and I must, I must congratulate you on your technique. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 uh, shut up, Steve. Shut up and get on with it. No, um, you're here, it's a chat show. Oh, you are, you're quite yes, right, yes, yes, I can talk inconsequentially. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, I, I, it's nice to talk to people who might or have read the book, you know, yes. simply because otherwise you, 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 you never really yeah. have any contact with them. It's quite a challenging book because it uh, involves reinventing history, you say, making history, and you go mm. back and, well, I don't want to give the plot away or the excitement, but you're sort of, your, your character gets rid of Adolf Hitler mm. by some mm. complicated uh, time machine and computers and stuff. Mm. Uh, and so that's, it, it drifts rapidly from a sort of jolly Cambridge sort of story to a yeah. rather serious uh, matter involving the Holocaust. Yeah. And, yeah. and some people say, well, is this a proper you know, subject for, for novels at all, really? I think it is 
it's almost, one feels sometimes, it's the only subject. It's such an astonishing mm. um, um, feature of the 20th century. And Jewish people, you know, always talk about it as Hitler, they say, and, and then Hitler killed, yeah. you know, your Uncle Rudolph or whatever. Um, in the same way that he seemed to say, or oh, oh, Hitler did in that lot of yeah. Hackney marches or whatever. Um, and I've always loved contingency novels, what-if novels, mm. you know. And I've always been fascinated by the idea that this vast piece of the destruction of, of the 20th century, this huge eruption of barbarian, appalling behavior. Did it depend yeah. on one sperm hitting one egg? Yeah. Can, can, can our lives, can history, can yeah. humanity really be explained yeah. by that? Well, anyway, in your book, yeah. I don't, again, not to no, get too sorry, much away, you get rid of uh, Adolf Hitler, mm. but it's kind of worse. It's worse for the Jews it, and worse generally uh, because the... the it, it's, yeah. it's a thesis. I mean, I've got no, I don't want to let Hitler off the hook, but yeah. one doesn't want to let the whole of humanity, the whole no. of that Europe yeah. off the hook either. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's not I'm saying that that would definitely be the case, but it's possible. Suppose there'd been someone who, unlike Hitler, had not been quite as mad and megalomaniac, but someone who waited till the summer for, to invade Russia, for example. Yes. Someone who hadn't kicked out all the yeah. German physicists from Göttingen in the, in the 30s. I mean, Germany could have had a nuclear bomb by 1936. Well, there are sort of millions of what-ifs. Sort of uh, that's I mean, right. I mean, you only have to change one tiny little thing. You uh, don't even have to get rid of Hitler to completely no, transform the absolutely, world. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, I've asked you about the film, asked you about your book. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what was it, about a year ago, just a year ago, you were in Cellmates. And, uh, no. <laughs> and as it happens, I was in India. And uh, you'll be, I don't mm -hmm. know if you'd be surprised to learn, but I happened to be, you know, in the middle of nowhere and switched on the television, BBC World Service, and like third item <laughs> on the television news, Stephen Fry gone missing. Oh, and, got, and by the time I came back... You uh, started looking for me. <laughs> I, I, well, it did say he's, he's suspected to have gone in hiding with some old Cambridge friend. And then I thought, oh, hang on. <laughs> that chap, that who's supposed to be a Gurkha, looks rather tall. Maybe that's, <laughs> has that been Stephen all along? But, uh, but uh, and the time I got back, you'd been sort of rediscovered and it was kind of all over. So I never really got my head round, whether, was it... Uh, some sort of uh, silly thing you did that you just uh, panicked over a, a couple of reviews, or was it more serious than that? And and so I never really. So I I how serious was it? Is it something we should be joking about in a kind of wogany kind of way, or should well, is, is this more? <laughs> or, is this, or should we do Opera Winfrey and oh, uh, no, discover the roots of this? No, 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 no. Um, I, uh, it, it's serious in as much as it upset a lot of people, make a lot of people worried, and you know I wouldn't want to joke with that. Um, um, it's, it's funny simply because. It is funny when people make a spectacle of themselves in public, and, um, and one feels just the most thoroughgoing, complete arse. You know, there's, <laughs> there's, no, there's, no, there's no way out of that. Um, yeah. And, you know, in a, in a strange way, the human mind and the human body are, are, are merciful in that you can't recreate pain in your head. I, yeah. I was miserable. I was really, really yeah. unhappy. But it, I, well, that I can't have been brought on by a few bad... Uh, reviews because they weren't that bad they were no, what would normally be described as, as it, mixed, it wasn't that. mixed I, uh, notices people decided that was the reason for it yeah. um it, i wasn't happy in the play that's certainly one thing but i wasn't happy in yeah, all kinds of other things at the risk yeah. of being oprah ish um yeah. uh people always look for something external i mean yeah. one does oneself look for something external as a reason for unhappiness yeah. but no no burning it, candles at both ends or I, again actually, i've always done that but yeah. of course a point comes when you yeah. know the, the two ends meet yes. uh, over the candle, and there's just a yeah. burnt out old wick, and that's yes. what I was. Uh, husky I know the problem. Of a man. <laughs> uh, but I, I, a lot of people said, This is ridiculous. He's got, he, why Belgium? That was the main thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> of all places. <laughs> As Macaulay Hughes yeah. said, That's what really disturbed yeah. me. He thought there was something deeply, deeply yeah. afoot. Yeah. Um, to, I don't know why people fix on Belgium. I mean, because it's an amusing <laughs> place to fix on. But, well, um, you, well, you went there. I mean, you're. <laughs> I went through it. <laughs> I, I was in the town of Bruges for 20 minutes. Unfortunately, during that 20 minutes, a, a charming group of English holiday makers saw me there. Yeah. And, and when they read that I was missing, they, they reported oh, I that I was oh, there. So and for some reason, you know, the newspapers apparently yeah. sent lots of people there. And it never occurred to them that I might have been stopping off for, for a spot of lunch, which yeah. is what all that happened. <laughs> but so it's going to the language now. I was doing a Bruges, <laughs> just, you know. I go, oh, I can't face it. I'm going to Bruges. Yeah, I, I know, yeah. I know. But did you go in disguise? Were you trying to sort of, or were you just going, here I'm going, oh, I don't care? <laughs> I did wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just not Kiss me quick in Flemish or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me, I'm a balloon. <laughs> no, I'm not the kind of person who can disguise yeah. himself very easily. I mean, I am tall and I have a bent nose and I'm, I'm, yes. I'm sort of unmistakable. Um, so there was no getting away. When I put sunglasses on, uh, whenever I put sunglasses on, this is a really, really strong yeah. sun, and it, and it hurts. Yes. People in the air, don't think I don't know who you are, that's <laughs> no good, you know. And it is hopeless. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, have you been in touch with Simon Gray, whose play it was, who was the director, whose life you ruined, at least? <laughs> <laughs> well, he got very 
he wrote a book about it. Have I you know, read the book? I, I haven't, actually. I can't, I can't speak to him. Message. I'm sure it's wonderful. He writes marvellous books he does. about you himself. Don't, you don't come as well out of it as you might hope to. No, I I, no. I'm sure I don't, and I'm sure he's yeah. every reason to be extremely yeah. cross. But have you made it up with him now and said, look, I'll, I'll be in the next place for a couple of nights, anyway. He won't be terribly sweet. Stop, you naughty man. I, no, um, I'm too embarrassed, actually. I was in, 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 in a restaurant the, the other week, and I was just coming to the end of the, uh, of the dinner, and <laughs> the sweetie, the waiter came up and said, I just want to warn you, it's something great, just come in. And I, you know, one day I'd love to see him to hello and everything, but I was just, it was too late in the day, and I thought, I just can't, I want to be ready for it, um, yes. you know, because he might bop me one, I don't know, he so, might... Uh, so did you just sort of leave, just kick him I went out through the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad, yeah. I'm sorry. I oh, know. dear. Yeah. But I see. I don't know who should be laughing. What about Rick Mail? Because he was, you left him in the I know. As that's well. why I said that's what. I, that's really what I meant. I didn't want to sound frivolous about that. I, I yeah. upset Rick, and, I, and, and I, he's a wonderful. Mm. And all the other people in the play, the other actors, a big chance to be in the West Oh, West shut up! <laughs> <laughs> You've got to face this. I know. Get rid of that hurt. Get rid of that hurt. <laughs> I know, and I am sorry. Because they're all waiting to hear. <laughs> see you tonight. <laughs> Oh, you Silla. thought it was Silla, <laughs> Silla, Silla, Silla. This is your life. <laughs> this is your lawsuit, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> did you end up? You had to, they sued you, though, didn't they? For, um, yeah. Duncan Weldon, the, the, yes. the producer, did. did um, but fortunately, the, the insurance company um, um, realised that I was ill. Um, yeah. Uh, or uh, you know, that I, and I think that probably was. I mean, I don't know what ill means, and I, I hate the idea of using it as an excuse. I mean. You know, uh, it's a very thing to do. We always read of criminals who've done something absolutely unbelievable and then suddenly start sticking straws in yeah. their hair and going blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, and his saunders springs to mind. And, um, uh, <laughs> it, it, well, it, he, made a, he made a very rapid recovery. He did, so didn't he? He, he yeah. didn't check into the saunders yeah, clinic, did yeah. he? Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't want to... I want to downplay it. I mean, it's, it's, you know, again, at risk of not sounding sententious about it and, and, and so on and all, mm. all pious, but, you know, depression is a, a huge problem in this country. Yeah. I don't... You know, I use the word despair because I wouldn't want to use a medical term about myself and depression seems to become a clinical term. And a lot of people are very miserable and very unhappy, some for good reason, some for no reason. Yeah. And, and I was really unhappy for no reason and it, it's a peculiar thing, it's like the weather, you yeah. know? It just, it's just an odd thing. For some reason yeah. there's, there's clouds in your head and then the next day but, or the next week or yeah. maybe six months later suddenly yeah. it's clear and you can't understand. Right. Why but are you over it now? Do you think you could cope with a, you know, a West End play or a big project like that? I think that? I should hold off on, yeah. on that kind of thing. I enjoy the filming enormously yeah. and um, obviously being here is just my life has been culminated. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's How much when you're doing interviews like this are you, are you, you know, lit, literally talk, talk, telling the truth? Or are you just sort of uh, just saying things for, for everything is a complete lie. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but you know, yeah. there's, a, there's a thread running through your novels. Is always said, "I'm, you know, what follows is the truth." No, it's not. I'm just like, uh, how much of you is an act, and how much of you is? I don't real? know. I wish I knew. <laughs> I mean, I. Um, I, I said when I was sort of writing a lie about this whole thing, is, you know when you're a teenager and you, you write your signature and you decide yeah. you're going to change the way, you, in your case, yeah. you, you do your C or you do the V or something, yeah. you're going to do a Greek E or something. Yeah. And, and for a week or so, you're self-consciously rewriting you know, yeah. your, your signature, indeed your whole handwriting perhaps. But after a while, that is your handwriting. Right. It's not a pretense, it's not a mask. Yeah. That's the way you write. And it's the same with so much of one's behaviour, sometimes at a very deep level, about how kind you're going to be to people or how tolerant you're going to be when to you people. you say one's behaviour, do you mean your behaviour? Yes. Or do you, do you um, think so this you is think, a human... Am I really tolerant? Or is yeah. it just that I've decided to be tolerant in the same way I decided that I would do a straight-down mm. Y rather than a looped Y? Right. And it's now become a mannerism. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's you know, a pretty obvious question about conditioning and reality yeah. and so on. And, and I don't know inside, you know, Oscar, of course, spoke endlessly about masks and so on, and yeah. th that under each real face you come to the mask, which yeah. is the person. Um, and I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping to write an autobiography in which I, I plan to be excessively honest, so much right. so that I think a lot of people will spit at me in the street. I don't know, perhaps they will. I bet I'll be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm not going to come up very well. But uh, no, is, is there an inner you that we don't know anything about? Yeah, yes, I, of course I mean, is. the television audience and... People who've met you just have of no course. idea the seething anger and aggression. No, I'm not seething and angry. I'm seething and angry if I can't find my keys or my, you know, something yeah. like that. Like most people, I get absolutely furious, you know, very yeah. sort of basil faulty. And what is the point? Yeah. The point of having a car and a house and a stable address if you put down keys and they disappear! <laughs> and, and I bang my head and I caught myself to yeah. bleed by banging my head on the table where I knew I'd left the keys. <laughs> I actually banged it. I said, you bastard. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I yeah. bleed. I was so yeah. angry. But you're content within yourself that's, anyway. That's yeah. the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're happy, Stephen. Uh, um, now, um, has anybody here got a question for Stephen Fry? Just put your hand up. Uh, yes, lady there with the. Stephen, you've made a success in so many fields, but which was it most important to you personally to make a success? Oh, that's really tricky. I mean, I, I think um, books have have a particular quality because the, 
it, it, as I said earlier, they're read by one person, and so when the kind of... Well, I'm sure you'll get a better readership than this, uh, <laughs> eventually. Uh, yeah, <laughs> way hey. Um, uh, that's, that's lovely. Lovely use of, lovely use of humour. Um, uh, you you, should, you should try it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't want to trample on your preserve. Um, uh, when, when, when you, when you uh, get a letter from someone who's read a book, it's of a different order from the, of the kind of letter you get from, from someone who's seen you on television or something. That's a kind of personal thing. You, you really feel that sometimes you, you change people. You make them um, look at things in a new way. You change the colours of things for them. And, and that's a wonderful feeling. I mean, I, I love that. But on the other hand, it has to be said, I get enormous satisfaction from, from working with Hugh, say, and the things we've done. I'm but I guess you're somebody who wants to succeed at absolutely everything you do. You're a really sort of competitive person, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Um, Ambitious, uh, competitive, you know, really want to be the best always? I, people say that about me. I yeah. never feel Well, you it. say that about you, I, don't I you? suppose I do. I mean, <laughs> like in games playing, they say, oh, you're so competitive. Yes. I love playing games. Yes. I really don't mind if I don't win, but I hate people not trying. Yes. You know? Yeah. And I love to enter into it. Yeah. No, um, I agree with that. I agree on that. You should at least... I'm homo to... ludens. Yes. Yeah, you play ludo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with gay men. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's a, it's a... That's just silly. And you have to get the little counter to go into the... Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, so... <laughs> Any other questions before we get... Uh... Anyway, gentlemen there, there's a leather jacket. Uh, did you enjoy working with Rowan Atkinson and would you do another series of Blackadder? He's, he's fantastic to work with. He's, he's, he's remarkable. Remarkable. Man, I mean, I, I don't know anybody else who, who has comedy in quite the way he has. It comes from a different part of him. Most yeah. people, I mean, Rick is a good example, and Hugh and so on, the, the, their comedy, which is also brilliant, comes from some part of them. You can see it in them. It's their magnified personality. With Rowan, I mean, I, I said this, I was, I was the best man at his wedding, and I said it sounds sort of rude, but uh, it, it's just kind of... It's as if God had this sort of jar of comic genius in his cupboard left over that he had, that had a cell by it. He had to get rid of it. And he looked down, and for a joke, he just thought he'd give it to the most unlikely kind of <laughs> northern nerdy person yeah. he could find, which is not... You said point. that at his wedding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's what best men are supposed to Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, but the question was, uh, oh, would you look forward to doing acting again? Would there be another black? I don't think all the right guess, person to... You know, sound a bit like some, some awful old 70s band saying, so, you know, we've all sort of split up to pursue <laughs> our own individual, you know, artistic yeah. dreams yeah. and quests and... Yeah. Dreamscapes, um, yeah. but uh, <laughs> um, well, if no, you were I here, I'd certainly felt... try and persuade you to do some more Blackadder. Oh, I, I, I personally would prefer Blackadder to yeah. Mr. Bean, and uh, you get the ad additional bonus of having you oh. playing um, you... the quintessential Englishman <laughs> in some form or other. I think a lot of people felt that the last one was, was, was sort of ended, you know, yeah. jolly, um, jolly kind of moving it for a lot of people, seeing, seeing all those people kind of walk into the guns and so on. And it was a fantastic thing, but it doesn't have to. To, to be the end of no, the whole thing. It doesn't. You, it doesn't. you do a rather odd side effect of it is because a lot of people, you know, watch them on video, and we, it was some time ago we did them now, and of course you, know, you do them, and I haven't actually seen them back since since they first came out. You get people shouting things at you, yes. which are quite appalling, and you don't know whether, and you think someone's being rude to you. Someone the other day just shouted, "Speckle Jim," <laughs> and I said, "I'm sorry." Yeah. Said, "Speckle Jim." Yeah. You're trying to sell your parrot. I, I, I don't know. Exactly. I thought it's in the name of a pub. He wants yeah. the direction. Yeah. <laughs> and of course he started to go terribly pink because he thought I was being very rude to him. And I said, "I'm terribly sorry. I don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. And he said, uh, "Speckle Jim." <laughs> Your pigeon. I said, I don't have a pigeon. He <laughs> said, no, no, in, the, in Flanders. And I thought he was making some reference to me going to Belgium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't fly on a yeah. pigeon. <laughs> and suddenly it was an episode of Black Hat, you see. And, and I felt, I, you know, I felt all, I'd really been upset him, you know. Yeah. So um, I have to go and watch him again. So when, when people shout, you know, you yeah. know, what the yellow rubbery ass at me, I realise yeah. they're, <laughs> they're quoting something. Yeah. They're not just being rude, no, I hope. Just, not just looking at your trousers. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, uh, yes, I will. The lady over there. Hi, where do you see yourself in five years' time? More novels, would you think? Or have you had enough of that? You well, I'd say I'd like to write my autobiography next to yes. my publishers would quite like it too. I don't yeah. know how far up to, uh, uh, when, uh, what period I would go up to. But so how old are you? You haven't got to 40 yet, have no, you? Is that no. a bit young to be writing an autobiography? It probably is, but then you know, Laurie Lee stopped when he was, you know, his first autobiography was about sort of 11 when he, when, yes. you know, when he yeah. did. Um, yeah, Marvellous writer. Yeah, but a great writer, <laughs> that's true. He was a great writer. I knew there was something. Yeah. Um, Bob, yes. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, you pig-eyed sack of shit. Um, um, uh, right! <laughs> I am off! <laughs> oh, I'm off to Drew straight away! <laughs> you critics, you're so cruel. Now, um, no, yes, uh, five no, years, right. another novel? Uh, I don't know, I really don't know. I, 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 I never planned, it's just a great deep dark hole. I may meet someone and fall desperately in love and, and, yeah. and go and live on a desert yes. island with them. Are, are, you, clo are you close to that? Is there, is there anybody on the scene that we, you know... <laughs> hey, I've struck um, like it last. Yeah. No? Okay, well, yeah. thank you very much. Stephen Fry. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, that's sadly all we've got.